Our opening hymn is number 437, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing, number 437. At the Lamb's high feast we sing praise to our victorious King who hath washed us in the tide flowing from his pierced side. Praise we him whose love divine gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Where the paschal blood is poured, death's dark angel she Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, we are in the Easter octave still, still Easter Sunday, uh, the second Sunday of Easter, and uh, we celebrate today Divine Mercy Sunday, where our Lord continues in this very day, at this very hour, to pour the Holy Spirit into our hearts, and the Father and the Son pour the Holy Spirit into the world for the forgiveness of sins. So let us acknowledge our sins, so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my misery's fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them. For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles. And they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the A reading from the letter, first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, 
that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. With Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I just want to welcome anybody here who's from out of town. Uh, it's great to have you here. Also, uh, just a few announcements. Um, first of all, you know, we've made it through the last several years and it's been very interesting. And so um, I just wanted to re remind people of a couple things regarding the sign of peace. Um, when you give the sign of peace, you don't have to shake somebody's hands. Um, you can just say, Peace be with you. And you also were called to the rubrics call for just say, Peace be with you to the person to your around you immediately. You don't have to do si do across the aisles and things like that that's not called for that's disruptive and so again for the sign of peace just you don't have to shake hands again we kind of learn about you know uh, communicable diseases and things like that so 
Uh, we're supposed to be affectionate, but still, you know, just be mindful of the dignity of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Also, uh, on 3 o'clock, the Hour of Mercy, on Friday, uh, we will have the funeral Mass for Paul Murphy. And so please keep his uh, daughter Deb in your prayers and the family. And uh, we'll be making announcements on Evangelist, which is the new uh, communications methodology as well as my parish app. Uh, also downstairs, um, on the common table, there are a lot of clothes that some generous benefactors gave uh, for women and men. So go down there and check out what's down there. And, uh, you know, we have a policy for the common table. It has to be like new or in very good condition. No, you know, uh, VCR rewinders that are broken are to be given or broken radios. I want something good so that people, if they need to do interviews or if they need some household item that's good and functional, very functional, please uh, keep that in mind if you'd like to give, if you're doing spring cleaning, or go downstairs and see what you need. Also, today is Divine Mercy Sunday, and we will be having, I'll be having confessions at 2. When I get back, I'll try to get back as soon as I can from St. Charles, as I say, the noon mass, and then I have to close up there, so I'll get back as soon as I can to hear confessions from 2 to 2.45 sharp, then I get ready and we'll pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet and have a Eucharistic Adoration during that. And uh, also, I'll be hear confessions after the Divine Mercy uh, Chaplet. If you've had your confession heard yesterday or a week ago, that counts towards your obligation. It's either like 10 days before, it might be 10 or 20 days, 10 or days before, 10 days after. Um, it counts for the... Uh, the um, to satisfy the indulgence, the plenary indulgence, saying, Our Father, Hail Mary, glory be for the Holy Father. Receive Holy Communion and have your confession heard. And you can offer that indulgence for yourself or someone who's, who's passed away as well. So, you know, the choice is yours. And you can also look, at, look up Divine Mercy, Mary and Fathers, and you can go through the requirements. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Also, we'll have adoration at 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, and when Jesus uh, died on the cross in his one perfect act of love uh, for us to conquer sin, death, and the devil, and evil, uh, the soldier Longinus, who ended up being a convert, uh, thrust the lance into his side and out rushed water and blood. Now this has profound meaning in terms of the divine mercy because the white rays represent water, the red blood in Jesus's, coming from Jesus' infinite ocean of mercy, which is his heart. So the only unforgiven sin is the unconfessed sin. So <clears throat> it was very well known that fulfilled a prophecy in the Old Testament, specifically and very, very clearly in the book of Ezekiel, the vision of the prophet. And so uh, in Ezekiel 47, and other passages from the Old Testament, prophecies foresaw a river of life that would one day flow from the heart of the new temple in the age to come. Jesus himself says, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And he also identifies himself as the new temple, not only in John 2.20, but John 7.38 and John 19.34, which you just heard spoken of where Longinus thrust his spear into his heart. Uh, that's a fulfillment. Ancient Jewish readers would have recognized the significance of blood flowing uh, from the side of the temple and into water very, very easily. Why? During the festival seasons, prior to the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem in 70 AD, huge amounts of animal blood were shed in sacrifice to the Heavenly Father, to the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so when they did the animal sacrifice, huge amounts of blood were generated. Now, being smart and being economical and hygienic, uh, the blood actually had plumbing ducts, D-U-C-T-S, plumbing ducts, and in the temple precincts, in a plumbing system which emptied out of the side of the temple. Uh, the Temple Mount, it created a stream of blood that flowed down and joined the brook of Kidron that flowed along the ravine between the Temple Mount and the Mount of Olives. 
So the bloody brook had to be crossed if one entered, entered Jerusalem near the pool of Siloam. So a stream of blood and water evoked the temple image and the temple city to the ancient Jewish reader. They would have immediately recognized this. So this phenomenon helped identify the body of Jesus as the new temple. And of course, that physical flow from Christ's side is a sign of a deeper reality to the river of life, which is the Holy Spirit that flows from the Father and the Son. And throughout the Gospel of John, water is employed, uh, referring to baptism, and blood is discussed once in the Gospel of John in the chapter, sixth chapter of, God, of the Gospel of John, which, by the way, is the um, uh, is Christ himself teaching the doctrine of the real presence of the Eucharist after he feeds the 5,000. It's called the Bread of Life Discourse. Read it, chapter 6. And he goes so far as to say, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life in me. And he says to eat my flesh, and the Greek word was, uh, is gnaw, G-N-A-W. And so he's speaking in very real terms. And so we have baptism, washing away of sins, water, and the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ that we have in the Eucharist. And so uh, Jesus shows great mercy right after, all through his life, death. Well, he, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit because of the mercy of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to save us from sin and death. And his life, his death, his resurrection, especially his death and resurrection are key to our faith. And the pouring out of the Holy Spirit and the formula of absolution is for the forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus came to earth, to forgive us our sins, to redeem us and to open wide the gates of heaven. And it's very important to realize that everything Jesus did was an act of mercy. Listen to the whole Mass, and the word mercy appears again and again and again. And so God is mercy himself. And so our Lord... Uh, continues out of his loving mercy to forgive sins, to wash away the effects of sins. Little Pia Murphy was baptized yesterday, a little baby, and uh, in the font. And uh, so we had two people baptized in the Catholic Church at uh, the Easter Vigil. And every day Jesus gives himself to us, his body, blood, soul, and divinity on the altar sacrifice and the unbloody sacrifice of Calvary, but it's really a sacrifice which involves his body and blood. And so Jesus calls us, first of all, to accept his divine mercy. Do we have to understand that his heart is an infinite ocean of mercy? We can't concept, we can't wrap our minds around the concept of infinity because we're not infinite, we're finite. But just like a little kid doesn't have to, you know, know have to be an electrical engineer to know how to operate a flashlight to find his or her way through the dark so they don't get hurt. So we don't need to know the, you know, the technical and uh, the roots of the facets of infinity and infinite love and mercy that comes from Jesus. All we have to do, we're free to accept it. <clears throat> we are made in the image and <clears throat> likeness of God, <clears throat> so we're free uh, to accept or reject. God's mercy. Peter accepted Jesus' as mercy. The three times Jesus uh, near the Sea of Galilee, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Right? He was making up for the three times Peter denied him. But Judas despaired. <clears throat> and so we're not called to give in to despair. And so we're called to not only accept God's mercy, but to radiate God's mercy. And that's one of the points of the divine mercy of St. Faustina Kowalska, who in this image, this is the Vilnius image, and a, an artist painstakingly and frustratingly throughout the process took a lot of time to paint this image because she was trying to find the best way to capture the image of Christ. And so this is the older image, the Vilnius image of our Lord in the divine mercy. And so uh, we're called to accept God's mercy and to radiate it through works of mercy, which are bodily works of mercy or spiritual works of mercy. There's no greater way to uh, see, even right now, the uh, corporal works of mercy than a mother and a father taking care of their children. They're, clo they're feeding the hungry, they're giving water to the thirsty, clothing the naked, you may keep them clean and presentable, they love them, uh, they take care of them, and then throughout their lives they teach them the virtues. So they're teaching spiritual uh, works of mercy and doing so It's the, within the family, which is the kernel of society where mercy is given and received. 
And so there are bodily works of mercy and there are spiritually works of mercy, spiritual works of mercy, like counseling the doubtful, you know, comforting the afflicted. And there's one that's really hard <clears throat> to animate or to, to make uh, real, which is admonishing the sinner. That's a hard one to do because it can be very awkward. But parents do it very lovingly at admonishing children and mixing justice with mercy. And so there is there's a great book written during the Year of Mercy called Beautiful Mercy. It's put out by Dynamic Catholic. If you want a copy, I'll procure one for you. But it's great because it includes, for each work of mercy, it includes two accounts of each work of mercy by different authors. And there's a former atheist named Jennifer Fulweiler, who's from Texas, and she was an atheist, grew up in an atheist family, militant atheist right through college. Then she went through a conversion. And uh, she is quite a remarkable writer. She's speaker. She uh, has her own uh, podcast, Jennifer Fulweiler. And she said when she became Catholic, um, after going through a process of transformation, metanoia, which is change of heart and conversion, she said that, you know, she was, when she became Catholic, she said, well, I'm going to correct the sinner. It's going to be easy. And so she said her efforts didn't turn out like they hoped. And in her uh, chapter, she says, blunt argumentative statements never seem to get through to people, to anyone who's in a state of sin. As a matter of fact, the more I mouthed off about other people's missteps, the further I seemed to be driving people away from the church. So these works, this work of mercy, as she was trying to do it and animate it, didn't seem too effective at all. So she talked to a priest about this problem. And she told the priest about the people who had influenced her in her own conversion, who admonished her in ways which she didn't even realize or didn't even see coming. And she gave a great example in this book of Jerry the telemarketer. So in college, she and her friends, most of which were atheists, were getting ready for a party. The phone rings, she has caller ID, and it says on the caller ID, telemarketer. And so she decided to have some fun. She's got a good sense of humor, but she decided to engage in a prank, a reverse, in, and so to accept a call from this telemarketer. So she copped a terrible Texas accent, and the guy on the other line was Jerry, and he was selling vacuum carpet cleaning stuff. And so she said that she didn't believe in cleaning carpets. That's against her religion. And the idea came to her to play the role of a religious zealot, or as she calls it, a religious nut. And so wouldn't it be funny if she got the telemarketer to be the first one hanging up by launching into her hellfire and brimstone lecture about how carpet cleaners were from the devil. So, and her friends would have thought that hilarious. So she told that to the telemarketer and he said, you know, I've never heard of that. He said, what's your religion? And she winked at her friends and said, well, I'm Christian, of course. He said, oh, great, where do you go to church? That kind of stumped her and she says, um, well, I go to the church uh, of the Bible. And he gasped in excitement and said, you mean the Covenant Bible Fellowship out in Huntsville where Pastor Mike is? And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, Pastor Mike's a great guy. And he asks, how long have you been a Christian, ma'am? And she, uh, he apologized for such a personal question, but he said, it's just a topic near and dear to my heart. She said, well, I accepted the Lord Jesus into my heart and soul 10 years ago. She was mimicking the type of things that she heard in the South in Texas at other classes by other Christians. And he said, God bless you, just God bless you. That's so wonderful to hear. So she looks at her friends, her face grew flush. It was not the triumphant display of comedic genius she had planned. He says, I've got, and the man went on, he said, I've got to tell you the Lord is just, and then he started getting choked up. He said, the Lord has just done so much for me. She said, well, how lovely. And she didn't know what to say. She looked for the handset to hang it up, but she couldn't find it because they're on speakerphone. And he says, I'm sorry. His voice was cracking. He says, just that my life was such a mess. I was an alcoholic. My marriage was practically over. I was so depressed. I thought that there was no more hope for me. And the Lord, the Lord healed me, healed my marriage. I haven't had a drink in 25 months and six days. I could have never imagined that life could be this good again. 
I'm just so grateful, I'm just so grateful. Do you know what I mean? And she didn't feel anything remotely close to a comic genius at this point. And the poor man didn't know he was talking to a militant atheist, Jennifer writes, and that a bunch of her atheist friends were listening in. She says, oh yeah, I know what you mean. He said, I'm sorry, it's just so good to meet people like you to come across fellow Christians when you least expect it. So she said at that point she wanted to crawl under the carpet. So he said, listen, don't you even worry about this stuff I was trying to sell you. That's not what matters. I'll let you go and enjoy your evening. Could I just ask you for one thing? She said, uh, sure. So he said, would you please pray for me? So it wasn't the time she felt that to say to the man that she'd never uttered a prayer in her life, but she said, I'll pray for you. And he said, I'll pray for you too. His voice was brimming with open sincerity that broke her heart. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you and have a good night. She said, God bless you too, she stammered. Forgetting to use her fake accent, she hung up in a daze. And so she turned to her friends who were all looking blankly at her. And most were atheists. They never he hesitated to ridicule Christians. But this time, nobody said anything. It was dead silent. <laughs> Seeing such a rare display of vulnerability left them all frozen. And in the silence that ensued, it was clear, though, that he was the one who didn't get the joke, but she admits she was the fool. She was the one who was admonished. And so she received a glimpse of love that filled his soul. She couldn't help to compare what she saw in her own soul, which she saw as a stagnant swamp as compared to a flowing river of his life. So she thought of the warmth that the man had exuded and he possessed a level of hope and joy that was both childlike and wise. And she said, my own state of heart was like a stagnant cesspool in compared to a crystal clear stream. And when he said, do you know what I mean, earlier, uh, telling how this God had taken a shattered mess of a man and transformed him into a person who was filled with love, he couldn't help but share with the world, even on telemarketing calls, and as she closed her bedroom door, she looked at the phone and for a brief moment wished more than anything that she did know what he meant. But by now, she does know what he means. And she's a practicing Catholic uh, who has at least six kids. She and her husband both were atheists, are very devout. And so it's interesting how these works of mercy reach us. But we're called to be like that man, Jerry, who is so full of gratitude that he couldn't help exude it. Now we are called to do so mostly by our acts, but sometimes we need to tell people uh, how we feel about our faith, how we feel about God's mercy. And so I'm sure all of you have different stories about, just like this book does, about accounts of mercy. And so Jesus shows mercy to St. Thomas, and St. Thomas is not doubting Thomas. Jesus never called him doubting Thomas. He said, don't doubt, but believe. And St. Thomas said, and so Jesus had the mercy on, uh, on him so much, he said, look, put your, hands into my, put your fingers into my hands and your hands into my side. That's very personal. Now, there's no evidence that Thomas actually did that, but there is evidence of what he said. My Lord and my God. He made one of the most beautiful confessions of faith in professing Christ Jesus' divinity. And so the good Dominican nuns taught me, and I'm trying to tell, encourage you here, when you see the body and blood of Christ being raised and the bells being rung, say, my Lord and my God. Make that little statement of belief, and you'll receive graces as well, because we actually see mercy himself being raised up again at Holy Mass after the simple gifts of bread and wine become his body, blood, soul, and divinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death in his burial and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. give thanks to our Heavenly Father because he is so good. United with joy of the resurrection, let us turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers. For our country, for those who serve in the military, law enforcement agencies, firefighters, first responders, medical personnel, and veterans, we pray to the Lord. That on this Divine Mercy Sunday, the Church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, that leaders of governments will work to ensure that all people can live in peace with the freedom to worship God and pursue holiness. We pray to, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for those burdened by sin, that the grace of the resurrection would move them to receive God's mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those trapped in confusion or doubt, that they may be filled with the truth and the light of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the dying and for the souls of all the faithful departed, that they be given eternal rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the grace this week to face the trials and difficulties of life with the confidence and certainty that come from Christ's victory over death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Loving Father, the resurrection of your Son gives us a new birth to a living hope. Let us live in that hope always. We ask this through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. He This is the heart. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation on all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Austin and Anthony, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. 
celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with all those whose memory we venerate, especially the Blessed Mother, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, Helena, Richard, Charles, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body, and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace, especially your servant, Paul. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners Open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucia, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Well, deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. peace of the lord be with you always let us offer one another a sign of christ's peace On your stay, quit all this Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have but only say the word. communion and communion with the bishops as they uh, work to revivify our reverence and love for the Eucharist and the real presence of Christ. If you're practicing Catholic in a state of grace, come forward and receive communion either on the hand or the tongue. The body of Christ, amen. Consume, then proceed. Don't take two steps aside. Don't walk away. It is the Lord. The body of Christ, amen. Consume, then proceed. <laughs> Godhead here in hiding, whom I do adore, masked by these bare shadows, shape and nothing more. See, Lord, at thy service, low lies here a heart, lost all lost in wonder. The God thou art, seeing, touching, tasting, are in thee deceived. How says trusty hearing that? Shall
shall be believed. What God's Son has told me, take for truth I do. Truth himself speaks truly, or there's nothing true. On the cross thy God had made no sign to men. Here thy very manhood steals from human ken. Both are my confession, both are my belief, and I pray the prayer. But I plainly call thee Lord and God as he. This faith each day deeper be my holding of. Daily make me harder hope and dearer love. Oh, thou Like what tender tales tell of the pelican, bathe me, Jesus, Lord, in what thy bosom ran. Blood that but one drop of has the power to win all the world forgive. It's world of sin. Jesus, whom I look at, shrouded here below, I beseech thee, send me what I thirst for so. Bye.
stars from heaven's high portals fell. Let hymns of praise his triumph tell. Alleluia! 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 On the third morn he rose again, glorious in majesty to reign. Oh, let us swell the joyful strain. Alleluia! 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 Lord, by the stripes that from death's dread sting thy servants free that we may live and sing to thee alleluia alleluia alleluia
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. just want to thank our altar servers as well as uh, our choir and uh, Bryce, who's doing the uh, live stream that'll be on YouTube. Uh, again, there'll be a funeral mass at 3 p.m. For Paul Murphy on Friday, we'll have the 11 a.m. Mass as usual as well. Also, we have a very special guest, Sister Mary, a sister of Mary, Mother of the Church. Is that correct, Sister? She's in uh, Spokane. Uh, they, uh, she's teaching catechesis of the Good Shepherd uh, to help catechize uh, the lambs as well as the more uh, older lambs. But it's great to have you here, Sister. Thank you for your witness. Keep please praying. Keep Sister and her good works and the works of the Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Church over in Spokane in your prayers as they provide uh, beautiful labor in the vineyard of our Lord and works of mercy. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. The simple response will be amen. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Thank you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain upon you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, Lord, our angel, defend us now. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him in humbly prayer. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell the sea all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Saints Faustina, Helena, and Richard and Charles Borromeo. Pray for us.